Not good enough. My last video saw me replacing the Tronx X1 fire brick with an old PC power supply. It's free of course, it's incredibly stable and it can supply 18 amps, which is plenty. I've since used this supply to do a 7.5 hour print so I know that there are no unforeseen interactions or instabilities to worry about. However there is a problem. This supply generates almost exactly 12 volts, the reference required for the printer. The Tronxy Firebrick, my Firebrick at any rate, produces 12.53 volts, so half a volt over, and that's significant. What it means is that the Tronxy uh, running on the new supply can't reach print temperature. The highest it will go is 196. The temporary fix for that has two components. The first is the masking tape you see over the lower, I guess, one third of the cooling fan. But even with that done, when printing begins, the um, extruder temperature can drop as much as four or five degrees below the target, so the enclosure fixes that component. All well and good, and it got the seven and a half hour print job done perfectly. But today's project is to look for a better, cleaner solution. I need a hotter hot end. Well, let's look at a diagram of a, a typical hot end. You can see the components there. The hot end is a, a electrically powered heater, which heats up the filament that we use in 3D printers. The cold end is there to take away heat, thereby preventing it from backing up the machine into places where that heat is not supposed to be and damage can be done. And there's a fan which provides a flow of air over the fins of the cold end to help remove the heat. The problem is, as you can probably see from the drawing, that the fan is also blowing cold air over the hot end, which is the thing you want to keep hot. And this flow of cold air over the hot end is what limits the maximum temperature that the hot end can achieve. In fact, this way that it's drawn is actually the way it is built, and it, it makes no sense at all. There are two elements to the fix. The first is to move the fan and its enclosure upwards on the extrusion head. As you can see, this means that the air blown by the fan no longer crosses the hot end. It's constrained um, in the chamber to only cool the cold end. Doing this on the Tronx CX-1 involves extending some slotted screw holes, bolt holes rather, to make them longer. But in fact you can't achieve this complete adjustment. This is about as good as it will go. And then what we do is add another component, in my case, um, I've added a small piece of fiberglass cable insulation to deflect air from the fan away from the hot end. The extruder housing is attached to the y-axis with two bolts which go through two slotted holes. When these are removed the housing comes away and you can see the hot end, the cold end and the fan. So I'm going to try and use a Dremel with this uh, milling bit, it's a Dremelhead. Wilco's best, it, sorry about the noise. You get the picture. I'll spare you the blow by blow on this. Well, we've gone as far as we can with modifying the shroud itself. Let me reconfirm what uh, I've done. It goes on this way round. This is up. This is down. The wires to the hot end go in here, as well as the wires to the fan which sits here. I've extended these slots, which downwards, which means I can push it further the shroud further up and that moves it about halfway three quarters of the way off the heater block um, it's allowed to do that because I've also eased this side here to allow the wire that goes into the heater block to pass through here and I've been careful to 
make that smooth so we're not snagging the wire, we're not cutting insulation and uh, risking um, short circuit damage. Um, but the job's not all done. The fan is still blowing on a good, well, maybe half of the block, and it it's a leaky, you know, it's not an airtight system by any means, so it will be pumping air over the um, over the heater block. And by the, way, by the way, the only exit point is here. It occurs to me that there should be far more holes in this side too. I don't know what those two are for. I'll have a little look in a minute. But, yeah, why isn't this vented, this side, in the same way that this is vented? That would allow much better cooling of the cold end and less um, leakage of air out to the hot end here. So, yeah, slotting this would be another idea. Another idea would be to make one of these out of <laughs> 3D printed plastic. I don't know if the heat would give it a, a problem. I suppose it would give it a problem at this end. But anyway, for now, I've had another idea. I'm going to put in a diverter plate. I'm going to use this piece of metal. Which... Mm, yeah, but you're not, though, are you? Turns out that a hair grip and a butter knife and a nail file are not great tools for fashioning a piece of aluminium into a precision deflector plate. So um, this was plan A. Plan B was the fiberglass insulation, which I mentioned it's earlier. It's just not good enough. Um, and it has to not touch the hot end or it will conduct heat away into the into the uh, housing for the fan so that makes things worse and not better then I had um, um, an epiphany if you like I've got some of this stuff which is fiberglass insulation intended for high temperature cabling and it's good for up to 600 degrees centigrade so what I thought I'd do is cut a little piece like this and then just a moment and then sit it inside the housing, just a push fit under the fan. This has a number of benefits. Yes, it's a push fit and this is going to move around. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to impede the fan or fall into the blades because the push is the other way. It may or may not, not touch the hot end. It doesn't matter. It's a very poor conductor of heat and it's good for 600 degrees. And the natural curvature on it, because it used to be in a tube, um, is great for deflecting the air upwards so I think this is good enough along with the fact that I have um, extended these slots so I can move the shroud up much further now I don't know if we're going to be able to see where the shroud is no we're not but I'm fairly certain that it's it, well it has to be deflecting the, the hot air away from the cold end because it's doing that it's it's sitting in the fan housing deflecting air upwards well it's all refitted we can see the, uh, the screws are installed at the limit the bottom limit of the new elongated slots we couldn't have gone much higher or we'd have started hitting this here uh, this screw here this bolt here um, but we could have uh, taken action there as well we could have relieved the housing to allow it to go further up but um, same that side I think you can see though that um, let's go from access is difficult okay so this is the heater block and it's substantially below the cooling housing now before it was about level with it so it's being cooled like a bastard what this is is the fiberglass sleeving and you can see very clearly that it's perched right on top of the heater block and so any air that comes from the cooling fan has to come through that if it's going to take the direct route and it's not going to do that the fan is not impeded in any way at all so i'm expecting um good performance we'll see Well, we're ready to test it. Let's fire up. No boom. The, um, let me show you the, that's turning normally and not making any odd noises. 
So we're zipping up to 200, the temperature it couldn't reach before, and already it's crystal clear to me this is much, much quicker uh, rising in temperature than it was um, before any of this started. So, yeah, it went worse for a little while, but it's gone better now. And we've got a power supply that is a tank for free. No more fire brick. And we don't need to wait so long to heat it up, and I imagine we can go much higher. We'll see. Now it has slowed down uh, as it approaches, but that's normal. And if you look at the um, the, the graphic uh, on the host program on the PC, you can see that it is blipping the power on and off. So this is normal. It's just trying to creep up on the speed on the on the final target temperature, rather than overshoot it. So it probably considers itself done there. So now let's see how high it'll go. And long story short, how high it would go would be 240 degrees, and it's stable there. Although, if you look at the uh, the host program, Repetia Host, you can see that it's not completely 100% powering the heater. I think it may be saving something from overheating on the on the Mousy board. But 240 degrees is the top whack. And just for interest, I put the uh, the fire brick back on the old um, original power supply and got 254 degrees solid out of the unit. So let's just summarise where we've been and where we are. The replacement power supply, which was free, fixes the overheating problems completely and gives us vast headroom with an 18 amp maximum. However, when you feed it the 12 volts it should be receiving, uh, you find that it's 4 degrees colder at its maximum temperature. But with the new hot end upgrades, we've added 39 degrees centigrade for a 240 degree centigrade maximum temperature. And if you over volt it with the old fire brick, then you can get 253 degrees out of it. And from looking in some detail at how the thing is put together, there's certainly scope for further improvements. OK folks, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed watching. I very much welcome your comments. I'm not an expert by any manner of means and have been uh, helped in, uh, in this video by the kind folks uh, at this Facebook group.